welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Connie from Faf Designs. I'm a furniture painter and I'm also a brand ambassador for Dixie Belle Paint. The door's decided to close on its own. Every week I do a furniture painting video. Maybe you learn something, maybe you don't. But either way, I hope we have some fun. This week I'm going to make over this blanket box. It's already been painted once quite a long time ago and I've actually had it in my home. It's no longer needed in the space that it was occupying so I'm going to give it a makeover and yeah give it a new lease of life. So the first thing I did is to remove the trim which there you go, came off a lot easier than I thought. Um, so that just pinged off and then I went in with some pre-mixed solution of Dixie Bell's White Lightning which is a granulated cleaner and some water in a spray bottle that just makes it easier just to spray on smaller pieces like this one. I gave it a little clean because this has been used as sort of a coffee table slash toy box in my living room for quite a while and it was a bit grim, not gonna lie. I've said it before, but I'll say it again just in case any new people are watching the video. So Dixie Bell's White Lightning is a degreasing cleaner, which is the absolute bare minimum that you must do to prep your piece before painting. And once you've cleaned your piece all over with the White Lightning solution, then you need to give your piece a good rinse with clean warm water to get rid of any cleaning product that's on the surface. So as I mentioned before, this piece has already been painted by myself using the colour Black Sands from Silk Mineral Paint. However, that was quite a while ago and um, like I say, it has been very well used in my home. So for that reason, and also because I had to obviously remove that decorative trim that was damaged on the top, I'm gonna give the piece a really quick scuff sand with my electric sander. If you wanna find out about the sander that I'm using with a dust extractor, that's the big green hose that you can see, um, I will link video top right for you to go and have a look at. It's very non-technical but it just gives you a little bit of information about the sander that I'm using. So the next thing I'm gonna do is give this piece a raised stencil around the panelled front and sides. The stencil pattern that I'm using is called Lotus Bloom. It's available from Dixie Bell Paint and Dixie Bell Retailers. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but it's actually one that I designed. Um, so I promise I won't mention that again. So all I'm doing is laying the stencil down flat. When I'm doing raised stencils, what I find best is if I can work flat down. So I find it harder work if you are working on a vertical surface, just a personal preference. I find it easier to work completely flat. So I've tipped the blanket box on its back and I'm using Dixie Mud in white. It actually comes in white, black and brown, so there's a choice for you to use. It's a very fine sort of paste. So it's absolutely perfect for doing this kind of project because it's very fine, it sands very easily. It works brilliantly through a stencil just to give you a 3D effect. The little gadgety tool that I'm applying it with is called a thingamajig, that is genuinely the name of it and it's a rubber sort of applicator. It's got lots of uses. Um, this is just one of them, and it just um, smooths the filler down, or the Dixie Mud down, um, nice and smooth. And I think the problem is, and I'll show you how to correct something if you mess this up in a second, the biggest problem with applying ray stencils is um, the thing that people encounter the most is using too much product through the stencil. So if you imagine how much a sort of um, area where you might have over brushed some paint and you can see a little bit of texture, if you think how much, how much that shows up, you can just imagine like a couple of millimeters worth of filler, that is really gonna show. I think people's concern is that it's not gonna be raised enough. Um, but that's definitely not the case. You only need a very small amount of product through the stencil to get a raised stencil effect. 
So as you can see, this stencil is going to need to be applied in two sections to make sure I fill the whole of the front of the panel. Um, I should have left the mud to dry before doing this part. I didn't. I rushed it, as usual, because that's me. So I have tried to line up the pattern and very carefully place that over the top. But at, from experience, I know that that is never going to work brilliantly. Um, because obviously, until it's dry, that mud is quite delicate. So if you even just lightly sort of brush it with anything accidentally, then it's going to obviously mess up the pattern. So I should have waited until that section was dry and moved on and done this section. But I didn't. Um, it dries really quickly, so I don't know why I didn't. And you can also speed up the drying time with a hairdryer if you want to. Um, and then again, this end is where I cocked up again. I applied way too much product. And you can see me thinking, uh-oh, I have put too much product on the surface. But I think at this point, the damage was already done. But I will show you how to rectify that issue without having to take everything off that you've already done. Okay, here's me knowing something's gone wrong. So I have messed up, I've zoomed in. Right at the very far right hand side, I have completely messed up by putting way too much product on. And that's partly because the stencil wasn't flat to the surface because the panel that I am putting the raid stencil on has kind of, it's kind of um, recessed. Um, it's got like a framework around it. So here's what you need to do. Grab a sharp scraper and scrape away any of the areas that you have messed up. So I'm just taking it off that right hand side where it was applied way too thickly. Just scrape away as much of the product as you can and then leave it alone. Leave it to dry. Then when it's completely dry, go back in with a sanding sponge. I'm using a Dixie Bell sanding sponge which is equivalent to a 220 grit. You really don't need a heavy grit paper. This um, Dixie Mud sands really, really nicely and just completely take away any remaining bits of the Dixie Mud. So I've also found that part where I tried to join the, tape, the stencil pattern up and kind of smudged it a little bit. So I'm just sanding that down as well. Then line your stencil back up. Remember, the rest of the Dixie Mud is completely dry, so you are in no danger of smudging that at all. And then just apply the areas where you've sanded flat, where you basically need to fill in the pattern. The trick, if you do have an edge like this that you need to go up against, is to make sure that that stencil is as flat to the surface as physically possible. That will avoid basically the issue that I had before where I use way too much filler. So I am just trying to really take my time and flatten, make sure that, that stencil is flat to the surface of the recessed panel and not kind of sticking up in the air. You can use tape and you can also use a low tack adhesive, spray adhesive to kind of get that to stick down. But I like to make my life difficult and I like to kind of, you know, Need, I, need an, I need to be an octopus. I need eight arms to get this job done. I should have just got masking tape, but I like to make my life difficult. Okay, so I've repeated that pattern around the sides as well because that had a panel detail on either side. So I just thought I'd continue the pattern around the sides. I'll say side again in the same sentence. Moving on. We are then going to sand, really finely sand that pattern down because what you'll find when you apply your brace stencil is you might get some ridges or a little bit of texture where you've applied it with your scraper, your spatula or your thingamajig tool. So I'm just very, very lightly sanding with a really fine grit sanding pad. Um, I'm just sanding that down so it's really nice and smooth. I don't want any harsh edges. I don't want any sort of bits of texture or unwanted sort of harsh lines. As I've mentioned before, this Dixie Mud sands really easily. So just be very careful if you are sanding it not to go in too hard or with something that's too heavy grit because you will basically sand it completely off. And believe it or not, I'm actually going to base coat this piece in Silk's 
salt water. So Silk Mineral Paint is the brand of paint that I'm using. It's from Dixie Bell. It's an all-in-one paint, meaning that it has a built-in top coat. It also has a stain blocking primer and salt water is the colour. So it's a really nice white colour, but it covers fabulously, as you can tell from the video. The reason that I'm painting an undercoat as such, or I'm using this as an undercoat, is because I've got quite a lot going on here. So I've got the sanded oak top, which I'm gonna be painting. I've got the body of it, which was previously painted in black sands, which is a very dark charcoal colour. I've got the ray stencil, which is in white Dixie mud. And I also have a little bit of that bare oak underneath where the damaged trim was removed. So there's a lot of different surfaces. I could have used a primer here. I could have used boss, um, but because silk mineral paint has got that property built in, so it has a stain blocking primer built into the paint, I just decided to use this one. I am going to be using Terra Paint on this piece, but just know that this step is not necessary at all. The only reason I'm doing it is because I have so many different surfaces. I've got the mud, the previously painted, and also the oak. So I just want a blank canvas that I can start layering my Terra Paint on top of. I don't want to have to contend with all those different kind of colours because Terra Paint is very easily activated with water. I'm going to be doing a really kind of layered finish on this. So I just want a completely blank canvas. So I hope that kind of explains why I'm doing a base coat of white. Like I say, not necessary at all. If I had a beautiful wooden piece, um, I'd probably be wanting a little bit of that wood poking through, but because, you know, this is previously painted, I'm not going to strip it, and I've got all those other factors to consider, I'm just using silk as a base coat. Okay, I feel like I'm talking quite a lot during this video, um, so I'm going to speed things up slightly, and here I am finally using Terra Paint, after what it seems like ages of prepping the piece. I am going in very, very roughly in certain areas, mainly kind of the corners, recessed areas, areas where I want to add a little bit of shading and darker colour, with the colour Marigold, which is a really beautiful orange toned shade. So I've got some random placement areas of Marigold, and then I'm going to go in with Daffodil, which is the yellow colour that you can see me using. I'm using a natural bristle brush to apply both of these colours and I did let the marigold dry down some before I started applying the daffodil but terra paint is very easily reactivated when you apply either another coat of terra paint over the top or water which I am spritzing a little bit because I kind of want some drippy areas going on here so bear in mind that when you apply your next colour it may mix with the colour underneath it, especially if you kind of agitate it and work your bristles over it. So I'm kind of relying on that because I want the daffodil and the marigold and then I want all of those tones kind of in between where they are mixing to create some tonal areas. So those are my colours that I want to see peeking through my final colours, which are actually going to be blues for this piece. So, for that reason, I am now going to apply clear coat over the top of these two. So, you remember me saying how Terra Paint is reactivated with water and other colours that are put on top of it. If you want to avoid that from happening, what you can do is lock your layers in place with clear coat. So, I'm using flat just because I find it really easy to apply. And I'm going to lock those base colours of the yellow and the orange in place. That means when I apply my next set of layers, which are all going to be kind of blues and turquoises, those oranges and yellows are not going to budge. They're not going to be reactivated and they're not going to mix in with the blues and the greens. They're going to stay fairly pure. So if you want to lock your layers into Terra Paint and you don't want to kind of get them reactivated, use a coat of clear coat and that will lock them in place. So the clear coat has completely dried down. You need to wait a couple of hours before the next step if you are applying a clear coat to lock your base layers in place. And the next color that I'm using is called Blue Moon. It's a really deep blue. You remember me saying I'm gonna use lots of blues and turquoises. I'm gonna use this kind of as 
a bit of shading so um, again using my water sprayer to get this paint to move a little bit and I'm using just a really kind of rough kind of free painting technique this paint is designed to be layered it's designed to hold texture it's designed to be kind of a more artistic paint so you kind of have to let your let yourself go a little bit with this paint So I'm using my water mister quite a lot to get this paint to kind of drip and run, safe in the knowledge that my oranges and yellows are going to be locked into places. No risk of those being reactivated underneath. And then I am going to go in with the colour Malachi, which, to be honest, it's just such a beautiful colour. It's um, a really sort of deep green. And again, I'm just going to kind of... Um, it, to be honest, it wasn't even that dry, the, the blue moon underneath. Um, it, I let it dry for about half an hour, but if it mixed together, it mixed together. Like I say, you kind of have to let yourself go with this paint a little bit and kind of create more freely. So this is why this section of the video is going to be less of a tutorial because I can show you what I've done to get the effect that I did. Um, but in terms of teaching you how to use this paint, there really aren't any rules to it. You kind of just have to create freely. You can see I'm using my Continuous Mister bottle quite a lot. This paint absolutely loves water. You can water it down. Um, it's very pigmented and you can get really gorgeous kind of drippy effects. You can also use it to hand paint with. It acts very much like a watercolour in the fact that it does reactivate like I've mentioned before. So I'm just literally just having a little bit of a play with those colour placements and the best thing to do is just kind of keep standing back and looking at it and hoping for the best really. I did allow those deeper colours to dry down um, and then I went in with the colour that I kind of want to be most prominent in this project. I'm using a new brush as well, it's called the Big Daddy. I've applied some paint on a paper plate and I've also added some water to it on the, paint, on the plate as well. This is just going to kind of get the paint a little bit looser and I don't really want to, at this point, don't want to kind of agitate the deeper colours underneath. But I do want to kind of give a distressed effect. So what you can do with this paint, instead of your kind of traditional way of distressing, which would be to leave your layers to dry and then sand them back, um, you can really, um, you can effectively distress with a little bit of water. So you can see what I'm doing here is before the turquoise colour is completely dry, I'm just heavily spritzing areas that I want the colours to peep through underneath and this is just going to cause the paint to drip down and let all those colours kind of show through under the turquoise. And I thought I'd show you quickly what I did to the top because it is ever so slightly different to the rest of it. Obviously there's no raised stencil on this part so I made sure that there was a little bit of those base colours, the oranges, the yellow and the deeper blues around just kind of around the edges of the top and then I used a cross hatching motion with this turquoise which by the way I don't know if I've mentioned was called Lanny's Lagoon as always um, I know there's quite a lot of colors involved here and I'm still learning all the names of them as well so I will as always drop them in the description below this video anyway I cross hatched Lanny's Lagoon which is the most beautiful turquoise it doesn't do it justice on film or camera um it looks absolutely stunning in real life so i'm just cross hatching cross hatching there we go i got it out in the end cross hatching that paint over the blanket box top because i want kind of more of a solid color up here i don't want to distress it and obviously i want the focal point to be that raised stencil around the front and sides The next colour that I'm going to apply is Cerulean Blue. Again, I'm just layering up all these kind of blues and greens to get a kind of effect that I'm happy with. I'm using the Big Daddy brush again just to basically put minimal amount of brush strokes on the surface of this piece because 
whilst I do want some areas to kind of reactivate and mix together, I also want some areas to kind of stay more true to the original colour and not mix together. So, like I say, I can't teach you anything other than just have a good old play with this paint. You do not have to use all of the colours that I'm using. Obviously, I am a brand ambassador for Dixie Ball Paint. I'm very lucky that I have all of the colours, but you can use this, you can kind of get this effect with just a couple of colours. Again, just using my Mr. Bottle to kind of get that water to eat away at the paint, and that just creates a pretty amazing effect on its own, just by allowing that paint to kind of drip down and do its own thing down the blanket box. And then I'm going back in with Lanny's Lagoon once the previous layer was dry and I've not used as much water this time so this is going to be more of a solid coverage because this is the main colour that I want this blanket box to be. And then I'm just using a wet cloth just to kind of remove areas of paint so this um, this paint wet distresses absolutely fabulously and all wet distressing is basically I've zoomed you in for a little bit of a closer look so all it is is getting a rag or um, a piece of shop cloth like I've got here which is damp or you can spritz the surface um, like I'm doing now and basically you're just rubbing away at the paint so it's just another form of distressing and I've zoomed in so you can just see um, it just picking out those base colours that are locked in which is the yellows and the oranges there's also a little bit of the white you can see peeking through but I'm cool with that and it's just a really good way of distressing without kind of having to sand it just looks really authentic and natural and worn and soft So we're going back to the original two colours which are daffodil and marigold and I'm going to use a palette knife and now I'm just going to pick out some detail in that ray stencil with a palette knife. So you can do this um, as heavily or as softly as you want and bear in mind that if you make a mistake, if you put too much paint on, it's so easily rectified. You can either erase it with some water and a rag or you can go over it with your colour that you kind of want to erase it. So in my case it would be the turquoise which is Lanny's Lagoon. I could go over that and soften it down but all I'm going to do is just kind of pick out those base layers with this palette knife and it also kind of gives like a, a little bit of a chip distressy look. So again it's just another technique that you can use um, that works really well with this paint. I'll speed it up a little bit here because watching this real time is pretty painful, not going to lie. Um, so you can see it's just bringing that ray stencil to life. You only need a very, very small amount of paint. I'm actually using the paint that's on the lid of these um, tubs because you just need a minuscule amount of paint to kind of get this effect. And as I mentioned before, if you do go in a little bit heavy or you think that it might be a little bit too much, what you can do is just lightly spritz it and I'm just kind of agitating it with my finger. I'm not kind of rubbing it in circles, I'm just tapping it. And that is just going to soften the paint without mixing it too much with the turquoise. And it's also going to promote that paint to kind of drip down. I do want a few drips in this paintwork. I kind of want to make it look um, a little bit bohemian and a little bit colourful, a little bit vintage. So I'm just trying to get that paint to kind of run down. Um, I, I, oh, I've, yep, yeah, going for the, yep, yeah, we've gone in for a close up. There we go. Um, so, yeah, you can see I'm just tapping away with my brightly painted neon orange fingers. There, I'm just getting it to run and drip down the front of the blanket box. While the outside was drying down, I decided to give the inside a refresh, plus that pink isn't kind of really working with the exterior colours. So I used Deep Sea from the Silk range, um, mainly because I really didn't want to top coat the interior of this blanket box, I'm not going to lie. 
Um, Silk has got a built-in top coat, so two coats of this bad boy, and it was job done. Okay, so I left this blanket box to completely dry overnight to make sure everything was nice and dry. The final job is to top coat it. So Terra Paint does require a top coat. It needs sealing because otherwise you spill anything on it and it will reactivate. So I don't, still don't have the wax yet, the Terra Wax. I can't wait to get my hands on it because you know how I love wax. So I am using flat clear coat with a natural, no I'm not, it's a synthetic brush and the best technique that I have found is to use a really, really light hand. So the um, Dixie Bell synthetic brushes have got a really soft kind of feathered bristle at the end. It's super soft and um, the best thing to do is to just really lightly feather that over your piece because the last thing you want to do is kind of scrub too hard on the surface activate your paint and then kind of smudge all your pretty blended work that you've done. So I'll just show you quickly on the front again how I applied it. It just brings all those colours back to life because as Terra Clay paint dries it actually goes quite a lot lighter than what the paint does when you apply it when it's wet. So when you apply your top coat whether that be Terra Wax or your clear coat it does kind of bring all those colours back to life and you get the depth and the vibrancy of the colours, um, what they look like basically when they were wet. So again, you can see I'm using a super light hand over this because not to blow my own trumpet, but I am very chuffed with how the front of this and the sides of this with the race stencil turned out. The last thing I want to do is kind of mess all of that up by scrubbing too hard with my brush. So I'm just using a very, very light hand, using kind of a crosshatch motion over the race stencil to get in all the little nooks and crannies. And I'm just going to leave it alone. And then I'm going to apply my second coat, which means obviously the first coat will have locked that in and I can be a little bit more heavy handed with the application of the second coat. So here's a little shot of the top. You can just see it's sort of a little bit more subtle than the rest of it. A close up of all those gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And the final shot, I've just kept it fairly simple. A couple of books, some flowers out of the garden. Thank you for watching the video as always I really hope you enjoyed it and I just can't tell you how much I am loving using this paint it is just so lovely to work with every time I use it I just like it a little bit more these colors are right up my street and in fact I am trying to think of somewhere where I can put this so I can keep it because I just love it so I hope you liked it make sure you are subscribed to my channel and don't forget to ring the notification bell